in one of my latest videos, I worked on the installation of the EMP shield for the house. Now, if you don't have a generator, the EMP shield for the house is not going to do you any good unless we just have a partial power grid failure and things get fixed right away. Um, so the next project here is creating a Faraday cage for whatever generator you have. Uh, in this case, I've got just a small 1600 uh, continuous generator, which isn't much. It's not going to run a whole lot. Maybe a refrigerator. Um, maybe two. But uh, the plan here is to have two of the same generators. I haven't bought the second one yet, but we're going to bridge them, run them in parallel. And that way we have double the wattage. And I have a second generator, so my plan is if, let's say, you get the uh, EMP strike, you wait a couple days because you wouldn't want to pull out your generator right away. Because if there's a second strike, you know, a few days later, you don't want to kill your, uh, your only generator. So we pull the generator out, we start running it, but we keep a second generator back in the same space for later in case this one gets cooked. But uh, we're gonna start by putting down this mesh steel and we're just gonna layer. Uh, first, we're gonna create the cage outside um, the perimeter in the space that we've got. And then we'll put subsequent uh, layers of insulating material and then more metallic material, and finally, uh, Faraday fab fabric. So the metal sheeting we get, uh, bought this from Home Depot, and uh, eh, it's not too expensive, maybe eight bucks a sheet. This is what it looks like on the floor. We're gonna need some tin snips to cut the uh, sheeting. And then I'm just going to staple it down to the wood as I get it formed. We're going to layer all sides. And eventually, of course, it's going to have a door. We'll use the aluminum conductive tape to seal the edges. That way we don't have any cracks. I've been trying to give some thought to what the final uh, wrap's going to be on the generator and my original plan was to use the Faraday cloth and I still might do that but this Big Chief smoker which is rusted out on the inside it's about probably 30 or 40 years old um, happens to be the exact size of this Yamaha generator and uh, yeah it's got some holes in it but you can seal it with foil tape and I think it's gonna do a really good job of shielding so later on in the project, I might actually use that. Even if that isn't a great idea, I can wrap this in the Faraday fabric. This is the outer door for the cage. It's lined with the steel mesh. Had to cut out a couple notches. I'm sure there was probably a better way to do this where I could just build a separate box for a cage. It would have been a lot easier aside from working on all these different weird angles because this shed is a hexagon shape. It makes it a lot harder, but with the wrap, on the edges sticking out here beams wrapped everything will be touched metal to metal as far as the outer layer goes and uh, haven't quite figured out how to attach it I'll probably just screw it on since you don't use a generator very often screw it on and 
That way if I have to use it, I can just unscrew it, get to it. This is the final part of the exterior part of the cage. I just screwed it in for now. I don't plan on using the generator regularly. So if I have to get into it, I'll just take the screws out and that'll keep both the mesh on the door and part of the rest of the cage sealed. And uh, all the cracks are touching as far as mesh on mesh goes. Just overlapped everything with the door and uh, did a little bending here and there. Um, you can see it's touching here. And the screws suck the board in to where the door mesh is touching the rest of the cage. I have to make the inner part of the cage. All right, the final piece to this puzzle is gonna be this old Big Chief electric smoker. My dad had it for about 40 years and uh, gave it to me. Uh, everything else was in, inside was all rusted out, useless. So turns out the generator is the perfect size for the smoker and the smoker fits inside the box. So. We're going to wrap the box in tin foil, seal up all the holes in the smoker, and uh, then the generator will go inside the smoker, all inside the cage that I built. Just like our uh, Faraday cans that we built using the uh, galvanized steel uh, garbage cans, this is going to be the same premise where you have an outer layer of metal and then some sort of an insulator in between and then another layer of metal. Uh, the next layer of metal is going to be that smoker box wrapped in tin foil and then the final box is an old uh, Big Chief smoker which will seal up all the cracks on that. But for now we're insulating the uh, exterior cage with uh, cardboard. So I've got the inside of the uh, cage insulated. And uh, of course, you know, there's gonna be some gaps, but the main idea is to get the separation between the metal and whatever unit you're gonna stack in here, just so it's not touching metal on metal. Um, the theory is that the cage is going to radiate whatever it catches down through some copper wire and there's going to be a grounding rod um, before it reaches the next shield which is going to be the box of tin foil and uh, subsequent layers of shielding will reduce to the point where there is no threat to the generator and as you can see here i have used the uh, spray adhesive on the box and the tin foil, and then you just lay it down and it sticks real nice. That way you don't have to tape everything, although I do still tape, but it sticks real nice to the box that way. Just another layer of protection. All right, so we've uh, wrapped the box, smoker box in foil using the uh, spray adhesive and the heavy duty aluminum wrap or foil. You wanna get the wide stuff, the 18 inch wide, not the uh, narrow type. Um, another thing we used was this uh, foil tape, HVAC tape to plug all the vents, cover all the vents with metal um, foil tape on the smoker so that there aren't any gaps. Of course, the lid's gonna have a gap, but we'll keep some of this on hand. When we seal up the generator, we will tape this shut. That'll block any radiation, uh, RF or EMF radiation coming in. And then we'll also seal this box on the outside with foil and foil tape.
the smoker has been sealed up with uh, foil tape on all the entry points of uh, possible radiation and generators ready to go in. I bagged it because the inside of the smoker is pretty nasty. Uh, the smoker box that it came in is wrapped with foil. So what we're going to do is seal up the generator inside the box, seal that with foil tape, and then insert it in that original box cardboard, and then put it into the cage. Right, the generator sealed inside. I've marked it so that you don't accidentally turn it upside down and the gas leaks out. Next, we're gonna put it in the box and seal it. All right, that's it. The cage is done. The wrap on the generator's done. Originally, I thought it was gonna fit in there front to back, but uh, since I added the box in the equation, it's uh, going to go have, have to go in there sideways, but I can store additional items that are sensitive in around the generator for uh, later use. All right, so there's one more piece of this puzzle, and that is um, not necessarily critical, but uh, it's just an extra level of protection. It's a ground rod and uh, copper connected to the mesh. So we're gonna connect the one end of the copper with this, get that in a parts or a hardware store, to the mesh, and then the other end is gonna go on this grounding rod using this, and we're gonna drive the grounding rod into the ground outside the shed. That'll direct the uh, incoming energy to the ground, hopefully dissipate it before it travels more inward toward the generator. So the ground wire is done. We used this. And I'll have links to everything in the description to find it easily on Amazon if you want. Uh, so we connected the copper ground wire to the mesh. Runs outside the shed. To the grounding rod. And that completes the project. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, you can help me out by using the links in the description to uh, find the products that you need to do this project.